Hey guys, Chris here. Tonight I'm in the Nevada desert and I'm going to be doing a story from this rock formation on top of this ridge here behind me and it'll probably go till after dark so I'm going to take you guys on a hike out after dark through the desert back to the car. That's next. Okay guys, I am in the side of this large rock formation on top of this <laughs> bridge here. The sun is going down and the wind finally stopped. So I'm really grateful for that. And we are drinking from the Mammoth Brewing Company. This is called the Double Nut Brown. I'm assuming it's an ale. Double Nut Brown by Mammoth Brewing Company. And that is got a super steep slope on it covered in snow which is so appropriate because it's been in a crazy year for snow up in the mountains just west of here so that is uh in celebration of all that snow but that's why i'm out in the desert here because i don't want to deal with it right now <gasps> oh yes and this is a pint that is a good size it says pack it in pack it out i like that good advice all right, doing the angle thing here. Oh yeah, boy, that is a dark beer. <laughs> Mammoth Brewing Company. All right, cheers. That is good. It's really rich, flavorful, kind of frothy right now, but... Yeah, it's strong, but it's not uh, overly bitter. I like that. Okay, so I waited for the sun to go down a little bit. It is uh, getting really dark fast. <laughs> Got the lights up. The wind has died down. I'm really happy about that. Let's see how far we can go before my battery freezes up. So back in 1972, just north of where I'm at, and I'm in Carson City, and then north of Reno in the Lemon Valley really kind of a wide bowl of a valley. There's this Peavine Mountain on the east side of it. And Kevin and his family that summer had purchased a home in this valley. And back then it was very undeveloped. It was this wide open desert, kind of like I'm in right now, right here. And they had this ranch style home that they purchased early that summer and it was an L-shaped ranch style home with the garage on one side and then the house and the bedrooms and stuff. And Kevin's bedroom was in the right corner here, just around the corner. And there was this cedar fence that everybody else was putting in their lots, whoever was building a lot at that time. Back then, the lots were going in slowly and so there was only, you know, so many houses in the development at that time. And so the fence was finished off, let's say from here here and then here and then the rest was just the fence posts and then the boards weren't put in yet and so this side of the house or this side of the backyard was open and it created a dead end into the backyard if anybody was to run in there they would get trapped kind of in the there because of the six foot high fence in fact i have one of these six foot high fences in my backyard i love it because it's a nice privacy fence there was also a pack of feral dogs that they would hear out in the desert that summer at night and occasionally this pack of feral dogs would come into the neighborhood the dogs would scare the kids and also the parents were concerned about the pets and what these dogs could do to them and there was two dobermans and two mixed breeds in this small pack of dogs a little scary back in those days when animals could run right through your neighborhood and do whatever the heck they wanted to. So one August night in 1972, Kevin was sitting in his bedroom in the right-hand corner of back of the house. He was sitting up late. It was about 12, 1230 at night. And he was reading comic books, just having a good time, staying up a little later than he should. He had the window was open, but the curtains were closed. And he was enjoying himself reading. And then he heard up on the mountain behind the house out in the desert. And you got to understand that this valley is adjacent to the Sierra Nevada. 
So it's very wide open desert, but up in the Sierra, it's, you know, it's pine trees, snow-capped mountains, and really rugged terrain up there. And so animals could come out of there easily into this valley. And so Kevin heard up in the hills and the ridges behind his house, the dogs barking. And they were barking at something. He could tell because it was very focused and it was very, let's say, stationary, focused on something. And he thought, well, maybe they got a jackrabbit and they're, they're cor got it cornered or something. And then it got louder and he was thinking, maybe it's a coyote. And then it, it just, they seemed more aggressive. And he thought, well, maybe it's a mountain lion. And he heard it for a few more moments, and then the pack started moving down the mountain, and it sounded like it was coming into the neighborhood down the street a ways, through behind some of the houses to the east of his house. He listened, and he could hear it. Now it was coming down the street towards his house, and he thought for a moment, maybe I'll get up and I'll go down the hallway and open up the curtain, take a look, and see what the heck is going on out here. Before he could make that decision, it sounded like the dogs were coming right to the house, chasing something. He listened, and he could hear the dogs on the opposite side of the house where the open part of the fence was. And before the dogs could come around the corner, he heard behind the house on the back side of the house, he heard loud footsteps, footfalls, coming down the side of the house, about 20, 25 feet down the side of the house. Really loud, about three or so footsteps. Ran right past his window, which was open. And then, whatever it was, it came around the corner and it hit the side of the house and part of the fence and crashed into the, <laughs> made this loud crashing sound. It shook the bedroom just shook that corner of the house and the window shaked violently. And it clearly hit part of the house and part of the fence. And then he could hear it made this grunt sound, this kind of a deep grunt sound. And he just assumed it was a man that was being chased by these dogs. But it was really strange that it, these footfalls were really loud coming through the backyard and it, they just happened so fast. And then, this, if it was a man, it didn't say anything. It didn't start yelling at the dogs or cursing them or something. You, if it was me, I'd be, you know, yelling at the dogs to, you know, leave me alone or whatever, knock it off or I'm gonna hit you with something. Also, the impact of this hitting the house and the fence was so, it seemed so massive that it didn't really make sense. But Kevin was trying to understand what was going on. This was 1972. He had never heard of Bigfoot, and he was a kid. So he just assumed it had to be a man. That was the only thing he could think of. And then just moments later, the dogs came around the corner, closed in on this thing, and had it cornered and started growling and snarling at it. And Kevin just immediately thought, oh my gosh, this guy is probably on the ground, probably injured, and at the very least, I should get up and yell at the dogs from the window and try to distract them or something to give this guy a chance, just anything to help. So Kevin pulled the blankets back, jumped out of bed, and moved quickly towards the window, put his hand on the curtain, and then he heard the scariest sound he could imagine, this deep, menacing growl scared the crap out of him. And it just had this deep bass to it and it sounded really large. And right away, the dogs got quiet. And then everything in the backyard, all this commotion and all this just stopped. And Kevin had not opened the curtain yet and then he carefully let go and he stepped back and tried to be as quiet as possible because he didn't want whatever was out there to notice that he was in the window by moving the curtain or making any sound. So he stood there motionless for several seconds 
just listening to see what would happen. And then he heard the footsteps continue around and it plowed over the fence. He heard the fence go down, just this loud crash. And whatever it was, took off running back into the desert. Just moments later, the dogs continued their pursuit after whatever this was. Kevin could hear them going up the boards on the fence and the scratching, and they had a hard time. I don't know what the angle of the fence was, but it was enough to make them turn around quickly and go around the backyard through the opening and back out and head off in the desert and continue barking and chasing whatever this thing was. Kevin stood there just stunned about what he had heard and almost directly experienced just outside of his window in his bedroom as a 12 year old. Also, there was this incredible stench, this lingering odor in the air that smelled like garbage and urine and mold just kind of wafting in the air. And it just added to the freakiness of the whole thing, eeriness of it. He didn't know what to do. And he thought, if I wake my parents up, my dad is probably gonna be angry at me might not even believe my story. It's late at night and I wasn't, he wasn't really supposed to be up that late. And then he thought he didn't want to go out in the backyard and start poking around. It just didn't seem smart. It was 12, 1230. So he thought, okay, I'm going to go to bed and I'm going to check this out in the morning. So he didn't sleep very well, tossed and turned for a few hours, finally fell asleep. When he woke, he waited for his dad to leave. Then he went out in the backyard to investigate what in the heck happened. He saw the boards that were leaning up against the fence that were gonna be installed in the open areas were down. And then he went around the corner and he saw the downed fence just flattened. And he saw scratch marks on the fence where the dogs had tried to clamber up and couldn't make it and then went back around. So he waited that afternoon for his mom to come home from work and then he told her everything that he had experienced the night before. She didn't know what to make of it and so he waited for his dad and he told his dad and his dad was unusually patient with him. He actually listened to him, heard the whole thing, understood why the fence was now broken and then he said it was probably a bear that came out of the mountains or a mountain lion that came through and was chased by the dogs. And Kevin was not really settled with that explanation. So about a year later, Kevin and his family were traveling along the coast in Oregon. They were in a small town and he found a brochure in one of the stores about Bigfoot, Sasquatch. And he was fascinated by it and that it might be an explanation. And he came home and he just was really excited at least to have a possible explanation of what he experienced in his own backyard in summer of 1972 in Northern Nevada. And that is our story for tonight. <laughs> and it is cold and it is very dark. We still got a little bit of light in the sky, but it is very dark. So we are going to take you guys on a tour out of here for a few minutes. And uh, that should be kind of interesting. And I got to get home. My fingers are freezing. <laughs> and I'm drinking beer. I should, I should have had a coffee or a tea or something. <laughs> And I've made my way through this notch here. This is really cool. Look at this. But the wind has picked up. Fortunately, we got the story in. And I had to climb over this point here. I'm just going to shut the camera off and climb down here. But yeah. These kind of bushes. 
sagebrush, whatever this is, it always looks creepier at night, doesn't it? <laughs> Okay, we have another small canyon to hike through to get out of here, so. Alright you guys, I made it back to my vehicle, <laughs> quite a hike, probably about a mile through the desert here. That was kind of fun though, <laughs> I enjoyed that. Thanks for coming along, I appreciate it. If you like stories about the strange, unexplained and things that go bump in the night, like and subscribe, you guys always know what to do. I appreciate all your comments, really good comments out there. So, And as always, keep hiking. <laughs>